Dino Fury episode two is certainly here. Sporix Unleashed. And first and foremost, guys, I just got to say, Bert Selling, the gentleman that does the music for this, you just give me all type of feels, man. You you truly do. Um, you just know a way of getting goosebumps and chills up my arms uh, with just the amazing composing work that he's been doing uh, for, for this uh, for, for this season by far. Um, and it even carried over into the morphing sequence here for me, to be honest with you guys. Um, I was really hoping for something really impactful. Uh, and and we certainly did. We certainly did, to, to say the least. Um, but yeah, I, I had to start off with that because I, I feel like. Uh, soundtracks, whether it be to to movies or television, is just so important in, in able to uh, lift somebody's spirits, you know, or lower somebody's emotions, if you will, and really just kind of carry you with some fantastic momentum through an entire episode. Uh, and Bert just just does that in spades, man. I mean, this guy uh, is incredible with his work. Uh, and um, I this is one of the, this is one of the few seasons of Power Rangers I can honestly say. If there's a soundtrack, can I can I get a soundtrack to Dino Fury, please? I, I I would love it. There is something fantastic about the synthesized instruments, um, very sort of 80s retro vibe a little bit to it with a more modern take. Um, I don't know if that sort of influence came back after like Stranger Things hit us on Netflix a few years back and maybe it started becoming even more popular uh, these days, but it speaks to me. It speaks to me, and, that, and there's just an epicness about it that uh, really gets to me, especially when it comes to the superhero realm, uh, and I think it fits something like a modern-day take on Power Rangers Mwah, perfectly well, man, perfectly well. So I had to give a shout-out to Burt Selling for um, just, just doing that. But um, I love the fact here that this show does just all the little things um, correctly, and it it is the little things that truly go – a long way simple things like just ranger training in here right especially this the idea of the training the training for the morphing sequence to make sure that you have it um perfect or as smooth as you can absolutely get it so to kind of see our rangers fumbling with their ranger keys or accident almost accidentally hitting each other it's the little things like that that I, makes me really appreciate the effort that they're putting towards the show because you realize this team is not perfect right i feel like we've gotten so many teams of rangers who have had no idea of what they're doing but have been presented with this stuff and they all immediately just know how to do it right like it's it's something that i think we've just accepted as power ranger fans that when you become a power ranger and you get a morpher boom everything just comes to you naturally and very easily so to see the idea that we have somebody in Zato to kind of be that mentor for Ali and Amelia, uh, I really do think it's brilliant. And I love the fact that they are very enthusiastic to also be Power Rangers and are open minded to to learning and having Zato kind of teach them. So it's the little things like that that I think um, really showcase just their their chemistry or how well they're eventually going to um um, get along and just kind of come together uh, and really just kind of see them grow their bonds over time as um, as this mentorship of Zato continues to get better and better. So um, I thought it was pretty neat. We got the, introduce, uh, the introduction to them training also. Um, he also explains to us that he doesn't have all the ranger keys because of the idea of i think ollie brings up the idea like whether there are six dinosaurs here right does that mean we're there's additional ranger keys out there or additional members and things like that um and he does make it very aware that the other keys were in fact lost so even zato was under the impression that it's only going to be a team of three which makes me wonder how um izzy along with um javi are certainly going to uh, come into play here like for me are they going to discover their ranger keys on their own ha have they already discovered their ranger keys and don't really know sort of what to do with it so um i i would be fascinated to kind of see what that story uh is going to be like with this other section of power rangers here with black and green um having somehow come into um uh, this this upcoming group so i am kind of curious to see how it's going to fit in that way we also got the introduction here to boost keys again Zato teaching us all these things along the way and they managed to kind of knock all this stuff out within the first couple of episodes of this um uh first couple of minutes of this episode introducing us to boost keys we even see it throughout the uh the episode a little bit the 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 gravity boost key i believe um we get to see the stink key which i will say this 
I mean, I guess we I guess we can't get through an entire season of Power Rangers without a fart joke. Right. But I, I will say this, considering the fact that this actually comes from Super Sentai. And if I remember when it comes to Real Soldier, I think this might have been the only time that they use that stink um, power up mode. Maybe uh, at some other point in time, I'm not quite sure, but I honestly am not expecting this season to be filled with with fart jokes. I think if anything, they probably just wanted a good chuckle using some Super Sentai footage from Real Soldier. And they certainly did get that. Um, and so um, we got to see the ability here for some power ups. And I, I think you guys are going to be really impressed going forward. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out Real Soldier, um, I think you guys will be really impressed with some of the, the power ups that Dino Fury will certainly be uh, presenting to you. And one of the things that I think, um, again, if you haven't watched Real Soldier, that probably really jumped out to you was probably the Megazord battle that we wind up getting at the end, seeing the T-Rex champion um, in all his glory glory um controlled by zato since the other teammates don't have their zords as of yet uh and he the t-rex champion just came out with a fantastic debut man i mean uh, again the maneuverability of the zord is unlike anything that i've ever seen and i don't know if the key to it is just the legs like if it's the idea of you just don't put a ton of bulk and design around the legs maybe it's a little bit easier for them to certainly um uh, to, 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 to get around in. I mean, the thing was, was running, it was rolling around. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable doing spin kicks and stuff. When's the last time you saw a Zord do something like that? Right. So uh, I really do appreciate, um, um, what the Zord is, this T-Rex champion is certainly going to bring us all season long, guys. So st strap in, strap in. Because uh, like I've always said before, while I'm not the biggest fan of the Real Soldier series, I do think that if you're adapting Power Rangers, th the fantastic stuff to adapt is definitely the fight sequences and the Zord battles. And I think that's just what's going to put uh, Dino Fury even more over the top, uh, along with the uh, great storytelling that we've gotten so far and, and some of the great music to be attached to it also. Um, quick honorable mention, I, I did just want to get more on the technical side of things. I love the camera work in this season so far. I thought this episode especially, just something about the subtle camera pullouts, uh, the slow close-up movements, especially um, when we see um, – Dr. Akana and um, Ali speaking when he tries to introduce her to the Sporex um, radar or whatever the case may be. Just a really great slow-mo pull-in shot um, to really add a great sort of dramatic effect to it. So I, I really am impressed with just the, the technical aspects of what this show is doing. And look, even the director, he's had opportunities in past seasons to direct Power Rangers also, but I feel like they're really taking it um, to the next level. I feel like there is more money maybe put into either the production value or the budget for this show, and, and it's honestly showing every time that you watch it on screen, um, even to the point to where we got our teleportion back here uh, in this season, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, they, I think he says you turn the dial once and then you tap in order to go ahead and teleport, and clearly not everybody has to do it in order to teleport, right? Like there's a moment I think when Zato literally teleports the team by himself and kind of catches uh, Ali uh, uh, off guard a little bit. So um, I, I do love the idea that teleportation is back. And it kind of reminds me a little bit, if I can make a Marvel uh, reference here, it kind of reminds me of the Bifrost from, uh, from Thor, if you will, whether it be the color designs, the way that it hits, like when you land, the idea of it just kind of kicking up a little bit of, of dust, uh, is perfect too. Again, just the, the little things, the subtle things that you may not necessarily pay attention to, but just really adds just great depth, uh, to a particular shot. Um, so uh, I love the teleportation sequence and it feels like they definitely utilized it brilliantly in here and, and quite often, honestly. So I, I I'm down with it though I, i'm truly down with it i really enjoyed what we wind up getting there in regards to the teleportation but guys this the morphine sequence can we can we talk about the morphine sequence here real quick man because um you know i, I didn't know what i was going to expect I didn't know if they were going to use aspects of what we got from Real Soldier at all with some of the backgrounds as far as like the disheveled battlefield and the night flags and the castles and stuff. Right. Like I wasn't sure how they were going to go that route, but I love the fact that they definitely went and created a very all original sort of morphing sequence here, guys. Um, uh, and also the fact that the training has, in fact, also paid off for our Dino Fury Rangers here in regards to having a, a, a smooth uh, morphing sequence. It's so much to the point to where I figure, guys, you know what? We got to watch it. We got to watch it together. So let's go ahead and pull this up here. Uh, this was from actually from the um, let me just make sure I have the correct 
tweet here. Uh, yes, this is from uh, Power Rangers Hype themselves. Uh, they went ahead and, and posted this. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure the sound is on. Let's go ahead and watch this, this morph sequence together and just get the feels for sure. It's morphin' time! Smooth. <laughs> I love it. Just the acknowledgement alone. Ooh. Yeah. My God. And I love this. This shot is so clean. So clean. I love the choice of background here and the added elements to the sword slashes. Just breathtaking to watch, man. Just absolutely breathtaking to watch uh, when you when you get the opportunity to see it. I'll even say this, you know, um, I, I'm fascinated as to why the marketing team for Power Rangers didn't use this it's morphing time from Zato compared to the morphing time that we wind up getting in the trailer, right? Like when we when we talked about the trailer a little bit, one of the things that I said was like, Russell, Russell, I hope this isn't the first. It maybe maybe this is the first morph. I have no idea, but I'm gonna need you to come out the gates swinging with your it's morphing time. And to say the, to say the least, Zato delivers, man. Russell Curry. Uh, talk about getting me hyped for a morphing sequence like never before, man. Um, the way he carries himself, the confidence that this man has. Um, I absolutely love it when he pulls out this morphing sequence. And guys, do me a favor. <laughs> Listen to the music when they're morphing, okay? One of my the the beat drop when they when they go boom and they slam onto the ground, the beat drop for this music just it, it just controls me, man. Let's 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 watch this again. Let's listen to this again. It's time. Coming out the gates, Zato. Love it. I love smooth. I love the acknowledgement. Here it comes. Listen to this. God. And I love this shot of them in the morphing grid. They're looking around like. Fucking brilliant, man. Do you hear that synthesized instruments? Bam, 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 bam. <sighs> Yo. Can we, can we, look, guys, slow clap. Can we, can we have a round of applause? Can we have a round of applause? For this fantastic morphing sequence here the music i mean the it's morphing time russell my guy that's exactly what i need to hear from you man talk about making me one hell of a happy camper with this morphing sequence it's funny one of my buddies uh kyle uh kyle uh from twitter reached out to me and he was like uh yesterday and was like um you know they presented us with the the still photos of the morphine sequence and stuff right um and he said it kind of feels a little bit the more of the you know the same old same old type of thing and he said but what's interesting is when i talked to somebody they said that the morphine sequence was going to be um uh, pretty different this season right uh, and he says well what do you think i mean they told me one thing but we look at these these um the, these stills and it looks like the same old same and i said well they're just photos Right. Like we we haven't seen the entire Morphine sequence yet, so we don't know what they're going to present to us, how they're going to kind of put it together. But the 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 music, the beat drop, the the confidence, uh, the 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 um, the them in the morphing grid. I, again, I love the shot of them just kind of looking around like in amazement at their own body watching this morphing sequence take place. Man, it just. <laughs> I kid you not. I probably watched it on repeat like 20 times in a row. Like it literally was just playing in my background because I just I just dug the music and I just I love the ferociousness of their of their morphing sequence. Um, You know, I, I, I don't know if some people are, might complain that maybe the idea of it may be a little bit too long. One, it is the first morphing sequence, so I expect it to be long. I really enjoy the concept of just having a full roll call, honestly, for the first time. 
But I do think that as the season progresses, either it'll get shorter. Um, they'll clearly will stu- still do the instant morphs with the link to the link link to morphing grid type of thing. Um, but I'm here for it every time that they want to g- get their morphing on, uh, honestly. So I- I'm here for a really long uh, morphing sequence, especially if it's going to get me hyped like that each and every time. Yeah, length is no- length is no problem for me, man. Uh, I'll absolutely take it. But. I do want to go ahead and, and talk a little bit about Zato in here because um, I, I I really have enjoyed Russell Curry in this position. You know, when he was officially announced, one of the things that I talked about with you guys here was that stature wise, I always felt Zato was probably going to be the Black Ranger. But when you actually look at his talent and you look at his um, his uh, his actors reel and all the stuff that this man's doing from being a, a hip hop artist himself, maybe on the side a little bit, him having a pretty wide range in regards to performances from being able to do dr- drama stuff to comedic and things like that. Um, he has always had this very confident uh, aura about him. Um, there's um, uh, it's very quiet, but it's very professional. And you know that like he has a presence when he's certainly around. And I love the fact that that presence by Russell Curry um, is felt in here, that he has that confidence of a leader. I've been doing this a while. I can come across as this mentor. And I, I really love what he's adding to it. Cause I don't recall the last time we had a group of rangers that were one of the rangers was the was the person sort of teaching them like i feel like it's been a minute since we've had something like that unless they've been power rangers in the past right i mean uh tommy from dino thunder you know coming in with previous experience as the mentor for that group this is pretty much almost the same thing when it comes to russell as he has had a previous power ranger team that he was in fact the leader of so he definitely has some experience under his belt so i love the way that he's fitting along with this team and i think russell curry is just knocking it out of the park, not only with that confidence side of things when it comes to the Power Ranger element, but still that element of not quite fitting in yet, right? Like when we see him having to go ahead and try and tell the public as to what's going on, um, the little uh, awkward moments of him really not fully um, uh, understanding the world around him as of yet, clearly understanding that there's a lot more that he has to learn, right? Like we're the dinosaurs. I would really love to see one right now. Like I, I just love like the non understanding that he has. And so for me, it'll be really fun to kind of see the Rangers bring him along and allow him to grow as a character and hopefully have some fun times introducing him to concepts of the 21st century that he's never been introduced to uh, with before. So I, I think Russell Curry, man, you're the man guy. You're definitely the man. And I, I cannot uh, wait to see how else you, you, um, uh, you do here. Calm, cool, and collected. That's Russell Curry in real life. It feels like, and it carries over to Zato and I'm definitely here for it. But um, just that, just that acknowledgement of smooth, like the fact that he took time out of there just to kind of like give them that positive, um, you know, that, that positive reassurance that damn, we, we got this shit down already. I, I love it. I absolutely loved it. Um, but let's also talk about some other characters in here, Ollie, because this week's mission really was the idea of to warn the people about the Sporex. But clearly, Ollie has other plans, right? They find Void Knight's uh, scanner for the Sporex, and his idea is to go ahead and um, reach out to his mother, Dr. Arcana, and have her sort of mold the alien technology with human technology that Zolan unfortunately does tell him probably is a little bit dangerous for you to certainly do and we see exactly why i'm not even the idea of them mending it but sort of putting dr arcana uh on the radar of uh you know uh, of the villains in here to where uh, dr arcana is a little bit in danger but speaking of dr arcana i mean talk about just doubly deadly not just deadly in the looks but also deadly of being able to take care of herself and beat that ass whenever she needs to right like this woman when i think of dr arcana i'm thinking to myself can i get a a spin-off series of dr arcana like just um uh indiana jones type style with ollie or just on her own as like a tomb raider type chick like i would i would love to see dr arcana um just onto her own personal adventures if you will uh just to, just just to show off what she's capable of man i mean talk about just a deadly combination beautiful and deadly and I, I cannot wait to see what else she has in store for us this season but i really love her chemistry with her son ollie i think her and um uh and um 
um, Kai are, are doing brilliant work together, honestly. Uh, and for me, like to be able to just see her uh, a little bit in her fighting style, uh, I thought was pretty cool with her her with the extension cord lasso around mucus. I thought that was pretty fun uh, also to kind of see her work. But one of the things that's fascinating to me here in this episode is the idea that does Dr. Arcana, Arcana, is she going to find out who Ollie is? Like the fact that Ollie has introduced two brand new friends to her, right? Um, he's clearly been hanging out with them a little bit more. He's coming across this weird alien technology and being introduced to these things. She kind of almost picked up on his voice towards the um, the end of the episode when he comes to save her. Uh, and I love the fact that Ollie has to disguise his voice a little bit. It almost reminds me of... Um, uh, like, I, I do wonder, like, can we go, will we ever go like CW route and just have like voice digitizer so everybody sounds like Oliver Queen from Arrow? Like, you you failed this city. Can I can I get like voice voiceovers for um their their Power Ranger voices as of now? Because for me, when when Ollie just goes into deeper voice, for some reason, I go. I go directly to Spider-Man Homecoming when Peter's trying to do his investigative thing and he turns on his voice things and he's like, are, he's like, are you, are you, a, are you a kid? He's like, I'm not a kid. I'm a grown man. Can't you hear it in my voice? I'm a man. <laughs> it just sort of reminds me of is Ollie trying to, trying to uh, disguise his voice for his mom. But if, if I had to put money on it though, considering just how brilliant Dr. Akana is, I don't think the idea of, her son being Power Ranger is, is going to fly over her head very long. I, I really don't. I feel like um, the way that the writing has been so far, the show is very much very self-aware of itself, very logical at times, right? Doesn't really let stupid things kind of go by so far. We're only two episodes in so far. Like they, they seem to pay attention to little details like that. And so for me, when I think of Dr. Akana and everything that we've seen her do so far in regards to her brilliance, I don't know if you're going to put a fast one on your mom. I have a feeling that she's probably going to be like, come on, come on, Ollie. Like, I, I know it's you and your friends that are doing this type of stuff. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if she does eventually figure out maybe by the before even the end of the first season, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I am really fascinated to kind of see how that goes along. And when it comes to Ollie's story, uh, again, I think it's a lesson that us as a fandom have to continue to learn to let some of these creators just tell the story that they need to and not necessarily jump to assumptions of what the story is going to be about, right? Like when episode two's description came out for Sporex Unleashed, I do remember a couple of people over on Twitter or uh, in the fandom kind of complaining like, oh, this is just going to be that, uh, you know, that filler episode or that lesson of the lesson of the day type of thing. And I think people's expectation of this episode just kind of went down um, thinking that they knew what we were going to expect. So I love the fact that we come out of the gates here. And this this episode, to me, if you ask me, did not feel like that sort of life lesson if you will i mean maybe towards the very end we have ollie apologizing and things like that and she's just like hey water under the bridge right and we and we move on to the to the next thing um so it de never def definitely never came across like um never came across like that um uh, life lesson episode. Uh, so I, I think even despite the titles that we see ahead of time or the episode descriptions, I just don't think that we should crap on an episode immediately until we actually do see what the creators actually do have for us. Um, because, you know, based off of the description, I don't think anybody expected to have this great of an episode. And it blew us away. So uh, I, I definitely enjoyed this week's episode for sure. A um, couple of quick honorable mentions in here. Jay Borg, uh, we get to see in the attempt of our Rangers to go ahead and let the uh, rest of the uh, town or city know about the Sporex and the danger. We do see that Jane is trying to find a, a future replacement for her, somebody that she can certainly train. And Jane is the boss of Amelia over at Buzz Blast. And so when we see them going to Buzz Blast to hopefully put out like a Power Ranger PSA, which they eventually do by the end of the episode, which I think is so cool that we have the Power Rangers working with like local re like local enforcement and, uh, you know, um, you know, spreading their word to protect everybody. Again, the little things uh, like. Like that really do go a long way in telling a fantastic story. But the Jay Borg that we get introduced to, Jane's new android that she winds up having built for her um, that can kind of do everything, it comes to us from the Hartford 
robotics. And I'm I, I'm absolutely wondering if this is, in fact, a nod to Operation Overdrive. If you recall the father in Operation Overdrive, Andrew Hartford, I believe he's the one that actually created um, the android of his son, Mac. So I am wondering if, if this is Andrew's company um, either still doing that uh, in regards to creating androids or if this is the, the beginning aspects uh, of that time. I don't really know where the time period is for this uh, this particular series, I would assume, if anything, maybe after that, because Simon Bennett has come out. If, just to clarify for people, Simon Bennett has come out and said that this show is taking place in the main universe and not the Dino Charge universe. So he has come out and clarified it is, in fact, in the main universe. So uh, maybe Hartford Product, uh, Hartford Robotics has continued on. But regardless if there's a connection, it definitely is, it definitely feels very much like a nod to Operation Overdrive. You had an Android in there. Now we have them creating robots and androids for here in Dino Fury. I'm definitely thinking there's a, a, a connection there. Um, you guys know, also, quick honorable mention goes out to my boy, or I should say my girl, Mucus, now, uh, a.k.a. formerly Crayon over at uh, at Real Soldier, one of my favorite characters in the entire season. Um, I, love the, I love how that character is being adapted i think a, i think a boy in real soldier um they do have a female voice over here for mucus um and and i'm loving it i i still think that the voice alone still sort of captures that um that kid-like fascination and enthusiasm for what what they're seeing and things like that right very much sounds like a a younger kid in regards to being involved in here i love the fact that he that's he's she was like oh you have a boss i love being told what to do and then now we see the partnership between her and void knight and things like that so i'm really fascinated to see where this is going to take us going forward but already um with the great sort of uh comic comic relief in at least one of the characters that they certainly have in here uh like the idea of um of uh zato just chopping him down he's like i, I didn't know it was gonna be that easy guys i had no idea um i, I love the delivery in here and the, com the the comedy continues to thrive honestly well again we don't really have like solely like characters that are solely there for comedic purposes i mean maybe mucus at this point is probably going to be that character but outside of that the dialogue alone is truly carrying the comedy here which i think is brilliant that's one of the things that we've been emphasizing for years and again it seems as though simon bennett and the rest of the crew are actually listening guys they're listening into some of the into what we love what we what we weren't the biggest fans of and they're making corrections you gotta you gotta give your hats off to simon bennett for that but going back to the comedy aspect you know when we see amelia and zolan in the command center and she's like oh that name is so awesome who names these swords and zolan's like anyway like moving over like okay newbie <laughs> time to move on from you um i love the fact when we get to warden buzzkill again uh he goes he's he's like, is this is this their spaceship and zato's like no, no, like just de just deadpan, just completely serious, not knowing that the buzzkill is actually joking. I, I wind up cracking up in there. And also one of my other favorite moments is when we get to see Amelia getting ready. She's like, well, we are. And then you got Kai that comes in the Power Rangers. And she's like, oh, come on. I was going to say that. Like just the just the little things again, the little things go such a long way in regards to pushing your fo your story forward adding that little extra emphasis of comedy here or there without going too much over the top. Uh, the, the writing, the writing is, is really on point. The dialogue is really on point from time to time. I haven't really heard too many corny lines or even uh, deliver, like delivered in corny ways. Like I just feel like this cast um, really is um, sinking their teeth into the script and really giving us something fantastic. If there was a complaint, guys, if there was a complaint that I have, it's maybe just the ADR work, right? Like some of the voiceovers of our our cast as their Power Rangers. Um, there's a little bit more oomph that I would really like to see in the ADR recording so that when it comes across as the movement of your Power Rangers, that it's really sort of matching up with it a little bit. I felt like there was a, a line that was delivered both by Zato and especially Ollie in here when he was about to go ahead and save his mom and things like that. Um, there's like a level of emotion that I think you probably capture as an actor when you're actually filming it yourself, whereas maybe coming in to voice record, um, 
I feel like you have to maybe carry that same energy over with you. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily happen. So if I did have any complaint in this episode, it might have been the ADR work just a little bit. But um, uh, other than that, guys, um, real quick, um, the Mega Fury Saber, a brand new original weapon in here as we get the opportunity to see the original cockpit or a new original cockpit for uh, Zato in his uh, T-Rex Champion Zord. Um, so they not only give us an original cockpit, but they also give us an original weapon here in the Mega Fury Saber, which you can clearly see on his uh, his his um, Dino Fury key when he calls the T-Rex champion. So I'm, I'm really glad that they designed that into an actual sword for him to use in the actual Zord itself. So that was pretty neat. Um, and then of course the introduction at area 62, which we see uh, mucus and um, uh, mucus and uh, void Knight discover really cool set pieces, man. I've been really impressed with what we've gotten so far. I really, I complimented uh buzz blast last week and especially that long one shot unedited uh, of them really exploring all buzz blast. So you can see how big it is, all the intricate parts of it. And the same thing goes here with um, area 62. I think that the, 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 the design pieces for the sets are, are really breathtaking to watch. And I'm kind of curious if there is a connection to this specific place that Void Knight has said people have abandoned, ha have actually abandoned in years. So I am kind of curious if this is a place that we might actually be familiar with and maybe just looks significantly different. So I am kind of curious. When it comes to Simon Bennett and what they've been able to do in Beast Morphers and in the first episode of Dino Fury with connecting Power Ranger lore and things like that, I'm really fascinated to kind of see what they wind up giving us um, if this is connected to anything lore wise. If not, I'm perfectly OK with that. But I just think the design piece alone is pretty fantastic. So, guys, if you ask me, another stellar episode of Dino Fury that thought they did a really good job of if you thought what you got in episode one was all the goodness. We still have some surprises for you. In episode number two, again, the, the the music selection, the teleportation, the morphing sequence, the training of Zato to the other Rangers. Uh, I thought everybody certainly did their part here this week. So uh, a fantastic, fantastic episode, guys. But listen, at the end of the day, I always want to know your thoughts. Go ahead and let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below after this particular episode winds up streaming. And maybe...